Welcome back to another video. Big breaking news came out last night that Charlton Athletic sacked manager Dean Holden. Let me know your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Like the video if you do and subscribe if you're new as well. Heading towards 100 subscribers. But it's huge news because it's so early on. And welcome back to AFL football because managers do not last very long here. He's only been, he hasn't even been at the club a year. Um, and last season were about sort of keeping them stable in League One, maybe a push towards the playoffs, but that were never really going to happen and, you know, kick on into this season. And I think, obviously, last season, they, they only, they've only had three wins in 10 games. And in the last 22 games, they've only picked up seven wins as well. Um, they've had the worst, their the equal worst start to a season in 33 years, which is nowhere near good enough. Of course, for Charlton, I expect them to be in the playoffs this season. The problem is there's still 41 games left in this League One season for Charlton. And I do feel like they've sacked him a bit too early. First five is about keeping the fitness from the pre-season, making sure there's no real big injuries, getting that pattern and style of play coming through, performances improving. I don't think results really matter too much in those first five but you can't lie, but it has been a concerning um, few games for Charlton because the body language on the pitch doesn't look um, doesn't look good. It's, it's concerning when players are looking around a bit bemused, wondering what they're actually supposed to be doing, which obviously lies on the manager. He's um, stuck. It's, he's sticking with his three at back, which um, it, it, I mean, it's it's okay, but it's it's quite heavy possession, and they want to keep moving the ball. And even then, you know, they're not having the best possession stats in the league. They don't even come in the top three for average possession. And one problem for me with this Charlton team and the setup that he's employed is the Dodge, the George Dobson position. He's playing him as a sitting midfielder who wants a break into a box. And in the last League One review, um, that that will have been after the Port Vale game, the three-two defeat. I highlighted that how. He wants him to break into a penalty box. B wants him to be sitting and breaking up play and, you know, all these lovely Hollywood passes across the pitch and spraying it about. And he's a fantastic player, George Dobson, and he can do that. But the problem is, it's it's not his fault. It's the system because you, you'll be so open in midfield, it'll create overloads and teams have targeted that throughout this season and that's why they're getting some big scorelines against them because the opposition are outnumbering them in midfield and they're getting through to the defence way too easily and that's something that needed to be tweaked, didn't seem to be tweaked against Oxford and that's that's one problem. If, if you're sorry as a manager that you're a bit stubborn, you're not really changing too much up and you're still playing square pegs in round holes. I think Blackett Taylor's been playing as a left wing back this season and his stats have been fantastic in terms of, I think he's the best dribbler in the division and he's, he's been fantastic. But you think if you just give him you know, the, the freedom in the final third to do it as, as an actual out and out winger, it'd be a bit more exciting. But that Charlton squad's definitely good enough to get into a playoffs. I think that he could have turned it around in the time that he had. But like I say, I'll read the last six results out now because that's the games we've had this season. I mean, astonishing how that's the only games we've had. But a 1-0 win against Orient on the first game of the season, that's as good as it got. Some big celebrations from him after that game as well. A 3-1 defeat to Newport in the Carabao Cup. A 1-0 defeat to Peterborough. To, you can't really complain about that one too much, to be fair. 2-1 defeat to Bristol Rovers. A 3-2 defeat to Port Vale. And a 2-1 defeat on Saturday to Oxford. Now, Oxford, Peterborough. You know, and maybe Bristol Rovers are going to be sides that are going to be, you know, in and around there. So they're not too bad results, but I think it's more so how they finished last season. Like, say, three wins in the last 10, seven wins in 22 games is nowhere near good enough. On the ownership, and we're focusing on who next for Charlton then. They're a big club. You know, I think I'm, I'm, I'm reading and looking at a few stuff from Charlton saying, oh, we can't get Darren Moore, we can't get Nathan Jones. And we can't get Chris Wilder some, you know, and I think that's quite a sad state of affairs when a big club like Charlton, who win the Premier League in 2007, I think it might have been 2009, they've, they've been a very big force in the English levels in the last few seasons and that's been built off having, you know, a stability. Having a consistent set of uh, players, a consistent manager, they had Kerbishley in the uh, Premier League years. And that were built off stability. The only two who come near to that is Chris Powell and Lee Bowyer. And Lee Bowyer was the last manager who actually managed to start and the end of a season for Charlton. And it, it just shows that they are they are in a mess at the minute. And, and I don't think Charlton fans will, uh, will be afraid to admit that there's no strategy. There's no continuity plan. Like I said, the stability is not live from anywhere in the football club. You've got players 
who have played under different managers with different style of players, and I think that's that's a big concern when you're coming in to a squad and you've got stu- and you've still got players from previous regimes, and, and some you know aren't, aren't that good. But Charlton deserve better. You know they're a big club and the, 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 they've had a few years of pain because of bad owners and they got rid of the previous ones. Now they've got these ones again. But I think they'll come good throughout the season. I think a bit of patience is needed. And obviously the Charlton fans, uh, the Charlton board, sorry, I can give Dean Alden that patience that he needed. And the next five games for the next manager who comes in, uh, I think Pierce is the inter- interim manager. He's got Fleetwood at home, and then I'd imagine, I'd definitely think that they'd have a manager in for Wigan away, Stevenage away, Wickham at home, and Shrewsbury away. Wickham and Shrewsbury are must wins. Stevenage is a tough place to go. You'd expect to win against Fleetwood, and then Wigan's going to be a tough game. But realistically, when you look at those next five, they're pretty nice fixtures for a new manager to put coming into, like I say, apart from Wigan and Stevenage away from home. Ultimately, for me, it was too early to sack Dean Alden. Yes, you could say he was too nice, but when you see pictures and you know talk of him going in pubs and talking to fans and being open with fans and I, th- I think the majority of fans uh, let me know in the comments down below I'll do a community tab as well for the Charlton fans but if you're new to let me know also were you ch- older in or were you older out because um, it's really interesting you know how you can sack a manager so early and like I say it comes from last season's bad run to the end but also this start that isn't it ain't good enough but I do think if he got time to tweak the weaknesses, I think he, he would have, and I think Charlton would have got going a bit. Um, but like I said, the big the big question is who did they bring in now? Lee Johnson because he's worked with um, Charlie, whatever his name is, that on the board at Charlton with, with Sunderland. He's just been sat by him. That was quite a good, funny interview from Lee Johnson where he sort of walked out. Carl Robinson also previously managed Charlton. I don't think that'd be a particularly good fit with him previously being there. Danny Cowley, I'm, I'm not too convinced about him. I think maybe League Two is probably where Cowley goes next, to be honest. Darren Moore, will he take the wages? I, I think he would be open to going to Charlton. You know, I don't think that's a problem. Like I say, they are a big club. Don't underestimate how much a big club can bring those managers into your club. But for me, the problem with Darren Moore would be uh, he hasn't managed that. I think he's only played Southern of, of West Brom, if I'm right. I might be wrong, but... Is it the location that could be the problem for Darren Moore? But I don't think it's a size of a club when you've still got some very talented players there for him to work with. Steve Cotterill, yeah, you know, at Appleton. Chris Wilder, for me, is probably the fit um, in terms of the experienced manager who can get you out of League One. The style of play suits the players that are there. I think he's the fit. You look at Nathan Jones, I don't think he would drop down, to be fair, but maybe he would. Would it be the style of play? A bit like Darren Moore, I don't think the, the, the style of play would fit. Darrell Clark. But you've got all different avenues. Like I say, you could go for the experienced man who might get you out of the league, who's got the experience of doing it. Darren Moore, Wilder, Nathan Jones. And then you go to the category of, you know, do you go for ex-players or um, put big name, big reputation players like your Lampards and your Scott Parkers, who I think would be open to going. But I think there's a bit of um, a bad relationship there with Parker and Charlton um, when he left to go to Chelsea. But let me know in the comments down below. And then you've got your younger managers coming through the AFL. You know, your League Twos, your National League managers, some good managers down there. I think the standout's probably Pete Wilde. And I'd, I'd love it if he got the move to go to Charlton or actually had the ambition to go and take that job. But there's some good managers out there. And I think Charlton will end up with a good manager. Um, it'd be a shame to see them go for another Dean Alden, a manager who's unproven or a manager who's got no real pedigree. I think when you look at the good managers coming through the AFL, they are proving themselves, whereas Dean Alden, he, he didn't prove himself to be anything at Bristol City. So it's a big it's a big news, big topic. What are your thoughts on Dean Alden? What are your thoughts on the ownership if you're a Charlton fan? Was it an unfair sacking? Should he have been given more time? And who do you want in next as a Charlton fan or as a neutral as well? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Like the video if you did. Subscribe if you're new. Closing on 100 subscribers. Have a good one.